Hey, what's up guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. Here in this video, I want to talk about five common plateaus that a lot of guitar players will most likely experience as they attempt to learn the fretboard up and down to the point where they know it pretty much like the back of their hand, okay? So as I go through this video, I'm going to be using uh, resources from my website, most of which are free, all of which will have links below if you want to check them out. Um, and those resources are specifically designed to help you overcome each one of these specific plateaus. And I'll show you how. So um, before I get started, let me first uh, say who I don't think this video is for. Number one, I don't think this video is for complete newbies because complete newbies, they really haven't got to the point where they are reaching a plateau yet. All right, because everything's new to you, you're only going to get better and better the more you practice. All right, so you haven't really leveled out yet, and you haven't really, you know, you haven't really plateaued. Um, the second type of person is uh, the person that's only interested in learning songs and solos from other people. If you're that type of person, nothing wrong with that, but there's not really any type of plateau that you're going to experience because there's always going to be more songs to learn, always going to be new, more solos to learn. If you're struggling with any one particular song or something like that, just keep practicing it, slow down the speed, practice to a metronome, keep building your speed up until you get to uh, get to the point where you can play the song or solo at track speed, you know, and then move on to the next song. So there's not really a plateau if you're just trying to learn songs and stuff like that. Um, so those are the two types of people this video is not for. Now let me uh, talk about the five types of people that this video is for. Okay, so the first type of plateau you're probably gonna experience is um, once you get to the point where you've learned a bunch of songs, you've learned a bunch of solos, but you wanna start learning how to play your own stuff. You wanna start writing your own solos, you wanna be able to improvise, but you're intimidated by the idea of theory, you know, scales, like why should I learn scales? There's so many scales. Do I need to play a different scale over a different chord? Every time a chord changes, do I have to switch to a new scale? It, there's so many notes, there's so many strings, what do I do? And then you just get overwhelmed and then you just kind of just assume that it's too hard for you. So, um, First of all, it's not too hard for you. Second of all, uh, let me just say that I think it really comes down to just two things. Two simple things, and I've actually put together a free mini course, which is linked to below, which uh, puts both of those two things together. So they are, number one, rather than thinking of it as a scale or music theory or something like that, just think of it as a framework of notes that's going to work, and it's going to sound good, and it's going to sound good over any of the chords within the progression, so long as all of the chords are within the same key. All right. Um, so let's take the A minor pentatonic scale, for example. So that looks like this. All right, so it doesn't really sound musical. What's the point? Okay, yay, I can play the A minor pentatonic scale. Big deal. So um, once you play that A minor pentatonic scale over a backing track that is in the key of A minor, you're going to see that the scale becomes musical. It comes to life. It makes sense. So I have a looper pedal here. I'm just going to lay down a simple uh, rhythm using chords from the key of A minor, and it's going to go like this. Okay, so I have that looped right now. So take that A minor pentatonic scale. That's my scalar framework. That's the framework of notes that I'm going to use. Every single one of the notes is going to sound good, and now it's going to start to come to life when I play that over this rhythm. So let's hear all this sounds. Okay, so as you can see that once I played that scale or that scale or framework over a rhythm, which was in the key, everything started to sound more musical. All right, so I didn't really play anything too complicated, nothing that you can't do, you know, just walked up and down the A minor pentatonic scale right in that one little four fret position right between the fifth and uh, eighth fret. As soon as I played it over a rhythm section that was in the key of A minor, the scale came to life. All right, so... Um, that is 
essentially the entire point of this mini course that I put together, which I'm going to show you right now. All right, so let me just show you this mini course that I'm talking about that I have available on the site for free. So this is available to free members. If you're watching this from YouTube and you don't want to become a free member, I'll also put a link to this mini course below as well. So uh, you can check it out with uh, no obligations or anything. So I'm logged into the site. I come down here to mini courses, improvisation basics mini course. And this is five modules long. And right now we're just talking about the uh, pentatonic scale. So that's going to be found in module one. So you can check out these lessons. And then there's these video backing tracks, three that are minor keys, three that are in major. So we are just looking at the key of A minor. So let's look at that one. All right, so this just goes on for uh, you know, nine minutes or so. And you can see here's your uh, framework. This is your framework of notes that uh, will work over this particular progression because this progression is in the key of A minor. That's why you have the A minor pentatonic scale. You can also play it up in the higher octave as well. So, um, you know, you can also try it in the key of E minor or C sharp minor just to show you how the scales are movable depending on, um, you know, what key you're in. So this is E minor. So that's E minor. Uh, then you can do them in major keys as well. Let's look at a major key. All right, so the same shape applies to major keys. It's just the location of your uh, tonic note, which is uh, what makes the difference between major and minor. And that's explained to you in the, these lessons here. So that's just module one of this mini course. This entire course is free. And uh, we go ahead and we add the blue note to that position. We then look at the diatonic scale. Each of these is expandable and contains those video backing tracks. Scale combining, you're combining modules one, two, and three together. And then chord tone targeting, arpeggio practice. We'll talk about that in part four of this lesson. But um, yeah, I just wanted to give you, uh, you know, show you what that was all about so you can check this out. Uh, with that said, let's move on to part two of this lesson. Okay, so once you get over that initial hump where you realize that it's not as hard as you thought to, you know, play leads or write solos or improvise solos, once you realize that you just have to figure out what key you're in and then play the key scale over, you know, whatever rhythm section you're soloing over, once you realize that it's pretty much as simple as that, you don't have to switch scales. A lot of people think that, okay, if there's four chords in the progression, I have to play four different scales, a different scale over each chord. That's not necessarily the case. If everything's in one key, if all the chords are part of a key, you just play one scale, simple as that. All right, so once you realize that, uh, the next plateau is going to be that you know, you're going to get stuck in playing in this pentatonic position number one. I refer to this as the home box. This is kind of just like the go-to spot that, you know, when a guitar player starts to rip a solo, they pretty much start out in the home box. So, you know, the next thing you're going to want to do is try and figure out how to expand beyond this home box and expand your playing range. So for that, I would suggest two things. Number one, um, first, uh, figure out how to locate the A string home box. This is just my term. I call this the A string home box. Um, it's also known as pentatonic position number four. And the reason I like that one is because if your home box is here within the key of A minor, we're going to stay in the key of A minor, um, your first finger falls on the root right here, fifth fret of the low E string. So if you find the the root on the A string, if you find the A, the note A on the A string using your first finger for this key of A minor, which is up here on the 12th fret, this is another soloing area that you can use. I refer to this as the A string home box. So this is just pentatonic position number four. It's similar to pentatonic position number one, but it has a little bit of a shift once you get up to the B string. So it looks and sounds like this. And then if you want to finish the scale, land on the A, you just slide up two frets. Okay, and then you can add in these notes. 
All right, so taking that same rhythm that I had before that I already laid down in my uh, looper, I could start out in this home box area and do this. Okay, see how I was still in key, everything was fine. I just jumped up to another area of the fretboard. All right, so rather than trying to overwhelm myself with learning all of the five pentatonic positions or trying to learn the entire fretboard all in one shot, I just took another, uh, another uh, pattern that was similar to the pattern that I've already kind of gotten accustomed to. But you know, now this is just pentatonic position number four. This is in, uh, this is in a different area of the fretboard. And then if I wanted to, I could have even jumped up to here to the 17th fret area. And uh, that's back to pentatonic position number one again in the next higher octave. So I'm still playing in key. I'm still using the A minor pentatonic scale. My rhythm section is still, it's still, you know, a rhythm section that's in the key of A minor. Therefore, all of these notes are going to work over all of the chords. But now I'm just kind of expanding my playing range. Another thing I like to do is I like to just kind of you know, take my pentatonic position number one and then just kind of noodle around with a neighboring position. So if this is pentatonic position number one, this right here is pentatonic position number two. So I may spend an hour or so just jamming over a backing track where I just play around, just kind of combining these two positions together. So let me show you what that would uh, look like and sound like. Okay, so I was just kind of noodling around pentatonic position number one and trying to familiarize myself with where the notes are of the neighboring pentatonic position number two. Okay, so that's another way I can expand my playing area. Position number one, jump to position number two. And then once I get bored there, I can jump up here to this A string home box thing, this pentatonic position number four. And once I get bored there, I can jump up back up here. This is pentatonic position number one again, but in the higher area. Okay, so let me show you how you might go about using this site to help you out with this uh, second plateau thing here. So uh, both as a free member or a full access member. First, let me show you as a free member. So as a free member, you can search all the free individual lessons. Pentatonic. All right, so... How to solo over the entire fretboard using the five pentatonic positions. Maybe you might want to check out that lesson. So there's the main lesson about that. And then you can find some uh, some fretboard diagrams for your, you to practice with. Okay, here's pentatonic position number one, pentatonic position two, three, four, five. And this applies to both major keys or minor keys. The white dot indicates the minor scale root. The red dot indicates the major scale root. So this is a free lesson available to free members. Um, now let's say you're a full access member. Some extra stuff that you would get. Let me... Um, Supplemental practice pages. You could either check out the, f the complete fretboard diagrams page and basically look at the fretboard diagram for the pentatonic scale on any key. Let me just show you this video backing track library instead because that's uh, kind of cool. So let's uh, choose one of these minor progressions, minor progression number three. We were just in A minor. So let's pick the A minor pentatonic scale. So this is another video backing track, but now this gives you your full A minor pentatonic scale spanned across the entire fretboard. If you wanted to try this in a different key, you could do so. Minor progression number three. Let's say you wanted to do it in, I don't know, C sharp minor or G sharp minor or B minor or E minor. Whatever key you wanted to do it in, it's all there. Um, if you wanted to try it over a different progression, you could try you know one of these other progressions. Let's look at minor progression number five. And we'll try an E minor. So E minor pentatonic scale. Let's see how this one sounds. All 
right? So that's E minor. So you see how that works? And there's tons of these video backing tracks all over the place in this video backing track library. So that's if you're a full access member or if you just wanted to kind of look at some fretboard diagrams. Let's see, pentatonic scales is what we're looking at now, minor pentatonic scales. You can look at all the pentatonic scale diagrams for any of the keys. So this is all full access member stuff. All right, so uh, let's move on to part three of this lesson now. Okay, so the third plateau that you're likely going to encounter is going to be once you get to the point where you're really good at playing the pentatonic scale, you understand that the pentatonic scale works over a chord progression so long as you're in the proper key. Right now we're in the key of A minor. The A minor scale or the A minor pentatonic scale works over all the chords. That's why we generally learn the pentatonic scale first because it sounds good. It's easy to remember these patterns or it's relatively easy to remember these patterns and all the notes are going to sound good over all the chords. So that's that. But now you want to add some more. You want to add some flavor to your playing. You want to add some color tones, some melodic, some, some more melodic sound to your playing. And that's where, um, you know, the next plateau occurs. So really there's only two things that you really kind of want to focus on. Number one, you want to know where the blue note goes within the pentatonic positions, whatever position you happen to be playing in. You want to know how to fit that blue note in. And number two, you want to know how to add in the remaining diatonic notes. So the pentatonic scale is really only five notes, even though those five notes can be found all up and down the neck of the guitar and all these different pentatonic positions, it's really just five notes. The diatonic scale adds in two additional notes to those five notes. So the diatonic scale is just a fancy way of saying, of calling the major scale if you're in a major key, or the natural minor scale if you're in a minor key. All right, so it's really just the pentatonic scale with two additional notes added. So in the, uh, the free mini course that I linked you to below, basically that shows you how to do all of these things. We start out looking at the pentatonic scale in both major keys and minor keys. We then add the blue note to the pentatonic scale so you can see how that blue note fits in. And then we add in the diatonic notes to see how those fit in, all right? And the free mini course, we just look at it in this pentatonic position number one, but the same concept can be applied all up and down the entire fretboard. And generally, you would want to take the same approach that you did in uh, part two. So start out in pentatonic position number one, figure out where the blue note goes, figure out where your diatonic notes go. Once you get good at that, maybe jump up to this A string home box thing or pentatonic position number four, whatever you want to call it. Do the same thing, figure out how the blue note fits into that position, figure out where the additional diatonic notes fit into that position. You know, or maybe start out on pentatonic position number one and kind of expand your playing range a little bit by playing within neighboring positions, using fretboard diagrams to help you, things like that. So let me just give you a quick example of how this might work. So first we'll look at the blue scale. So when you're playing the pentatonic scale and you want to add in this blue note, um, you don't really want to sustain on the blue note. You want to kind of just use it as a passing tone because technically the blue note is an out of key note but it still works when used as a chromatic filler. So let me kind of play over that same progression that I was playing over before and show you how this fits in. All right, so you can see how that blue note, I added that in, but I was just kind of using it as a passing tone. So instead of sustaining on it, which would cause a clashing sound with the chords, I was just kind of using it as a passing tone. All right, so that was just adding the blue note into just that position. I could easily add the blue note into any of the other positions, but I would generally want to get good at just this one position first. So after I got good at maybe position one, maybe I might want to add it to position four. So let me try that. Okay, something like that. So the same thing would apply to any of the pentatonic positions. Figure out where that blue note goes. Just get good at, at knowing the location of that within the positions. And you know then, then you have that new scale that's in your repertoire. 
Okay, um, the same thing would be uh, figure out where the diatonic notes go. So let's just look at this uh, position number one real quick. And then I can go ahead and I can add in my uh, diatonic notes. So over that progression, I could do something like this. Okay, so now I added in the diatonic notes otherwise just known as the natural minor scale. In just this position, I added in my diatonic notes and now it had uh, you know, more of like a, a sadder sound to it, more flavor notes, more color to it, whatever you wanna call it. So then I can just kinda, if I wanna go full on pentatonic, All right, so started out with just pentatonic and then I just went and I added in my diatonic notes for that extra flavor. All right, and again, the same process, maybe start here, jump up to position number four, jump back up to position number one, expand this way, whatever you wanna do. You know, those, those are really the scales. So you have pentatonic, you have blue scale, and you have diatonic scale. The free mini course, it, it has you working on all of those scales in, in conjunction with one another. And uh, it just kind of focuses on that pentatonic position number one. But there's a ton of stuff that you can do right in that position number one. But again, th the ultimate goal is to play across the entire fretboard. All right, so now let me just show you how you could use the site to help you out with this again. So again, let's assume you're a free member and you just want to search some individual lessons. So you want to learn about the blues scale, maybe type in blues. See if any of these apply to us. How to play the blues scale across the entire fretboard. Maybe that one will come in handy. There's a lesson on that. It's showing you how to add the blue note to each of the positions. Okay. So that's the blues scale lesson. Let's say you want to learn about the diatonic scale. Diatonic. How to solo within a key using seven patterns. Okay, so this is showing you the diatonic scale across the entire fretboard. All right, so that's free member stuff. Again, you could also uh, use the mini course if you're a free member, Improvisation Basics mini course. In module one, we looked at the minor pentatonic scale or the major pentatonic scale using these video backing tracks. The same thing applies for the blues scale or the diatonic scale, or combining everything together. So let's just say, uh, you know, we want to look at the diatonic scale in the key of A minor. You can use one of these video backing tracks to practice that. All right, so that's your scalar framework for the key of A minor, the full A natural minor scale. This is your chords that you're soloing over. Everything's going to sound good because everything's in key. And then, of course, if you're a full access member, you get a lot more stuff. So, you know, you can come back to your video back and track library again. Maybe check out one of these progressions. Look at, let's look at this minor progression number three again. We'll pick A minor. Let's say we want to practice the A minor blues scale over this progression. Pick that one. Okay, so now you can practice your playing it over the entire fretboard. You can play right here in your position one. You can jump up here to position four. You know, you can practice connecting neighboring positions together, whatever you want to do. You have the full fretboard diagram here if you want it. So, um, you know, it's the video backing track library. There's like 2,000 or 2,500 or more video backing tracks found in just the video backing track library, which is just one of the many things that's available to, video, to uh, full access members. All right, so let's now move on to part four of this lesson. 
All right, so this fourth plateau is one of the most common plateaus for intermediate guitar players. And this is the point where you get really good at soloing up and down the neck of the guitar within a key. So in this, uh, in this lesson, we're in the key of A minor. So you get really good at playing your A minor pentatonic scale all up and down the neck. You get really good at adding in your diatonic notes, otherwise known as just the A natural minor scale. And you can play in the A minor scale all up and down the neck. You get really good at figuring out where the blue note fits into all the positions. And you can just kind of do that in your sleep because you've ran through your scale patterns, you know, so many times. Um, the problem is that you tend to play the same licks and phrases over any type of chord progression. So you could have one chord progression in the key of A minor and you play all the same stuff that you would if you played another chord progression in the key of A minor or a different chord progression. So you can play a lot of different chord progressions that are part of the same key. But you, as the lead guitar player, you kind of play the same exact licks and phrases because that's what you've trained your muscle memory to do. So really the way to break out of this is to start focusing on chord tones. A lot of times people think that modes is the answer to this question. People start thinking, okay, I'm stuck playing the same licks and phrases. I want to kind of switch my things up that I do over each chord. I want to really pay attention to the chords now instead of just the overall key. And, uh, you know, maybe modes is the answer. Modes is not the answer. The answer is chord tones. Okay, so if you're in the key of A minor, your key scale is still the A minor scale. You could substitute the A minor pentatonic scale if you wanted to because that's just five of the seven total notes. You can throw in your blue note if you want to. Um, that's all part of the key scale. But as each chord changes, there's going to be certain notes that sound better than other notes within the scale, and those are known as chord tones. And the way that I specifically address this on the website is uh, any type of chord tone slash arpeggio practice exercise video backing track has the overall key scale displayed on the screen, but then the chord tones light up as the chords change. So just to kind of give an example, here's a full fretboard diagram. This is your A natural minor scale spanned all up and down the entire neck of the guitar. If I just wanted to focus on the pentatonic scale, I would just focus on these notes here. If I wanted to add in the blue note, I know where my blue note is within this position. But now once I start playing, I'm going to have the uh, chord tones light up for you so you can see specifically which notes to focus on within the scale. So let me try and uh, demonstrate that. So as you saw there, the chord tones were lighting up as the chords were changing. They were indicated by the green dots. So the overall scale was still the key of A minor. It was the A minor scale. I was just kind of confining myself to this area right here, this pentatonic position number one area. But I was really focusing on specific notes as the chord changes were occurring. And those notes were the, uh, the chord tones of the underlying chords. All right, so this is the whole purpose of learning the cage system or any other type of system that has the end goal of teaching you how to target chord tones. And, um, you know, I have thousands of these video backing tracks on uh, the website, all that do the same thing. So there's these chord progressions, the chords are changing, you have your overall scalar framework, but the chord tones light up so you know exactly which notes to target as you're soloing. So let me uh, show you how that works right now. All right, so back on the site here, if you want to, uh, you know, practice applying this stuff just in that pentatonic position number one, you can do the free mini course again. Let's look at uh, module number five. We'll stick with the key of A minor. So now these green dots are just 
overlaying the overall scalar framework, letting you know the chord tones of the underlying chord, which is right now paused on F major. So that means these green dots are the chord tones of the F major chord. If these videos move too quick for you, you can always slow it down using this gear icon. Here's the speed, normal speed. You can slow it down to three quarters speed or half speed. All right, so um, there's that. All right, and then another thing you can do as a free member is you can come back and then browse some of the individual lessons. So let's say you're interested in this chord tone stuff, chord tone, see what comes up. So here's the chord tone soloing series here. There's 10 part soloing series. All these are free lessons. So um, yeah, there's a ton of different, um, ton of different lessons. You can just pick one of these out. I like this lesson here, how to solo with triads. So this will give you uh, your fretboard diagrams and stuff like that in it showing you how to find these different uh you know chord shapes within the um within the overall scalar framework okay so this lesson goes pretty in depth into that and if you're a full access member you can either go back to the video library other things that uh this the way the site works is full access members get these things called full access extras so that's like whatever the individual lesson concept happens to be in this case it's how to solo with triads this will also um, give you the opportunity to uh, practice that stuff over video backing tracks. So. So this gives you the opportunity to practice in several different positions all the way up the fretboard. And um, if you wanted to slow this down, again, you could use the gear icon, speed, three-quarter speed, half speed, whatever you want if you needed to slow this stuff down. Also, if you're a full access member, you can um, look at fretboard diagrams for all of these arpeggios and stuff like that to see the entire layout for how these chord tones fit into the scale, the complete fretboard diagrams page. So let me see the seven diatonic arpeggios in major keys, the seven diatonic arpeggios in minor keys. We were just in the key of A minor. So here's the A minor chord within that scalar framework. Here's the B diminished chord within that framework. Here's the C major chord within that framework. Okay, so this is a little bit more advanced, but again, this is the fourth plateau, and this is how I have the site set up specifically um, for you to break through these plateaus. So um, obviously, if you're a full access member, you get a lot more stuff, but there's a ton of stuff that free members get too. So I just wanted to give you like kind of a walkthrough of how my site works, and uh, you know, it's an ever-growing thing. I'm constantly adding to it each and every week. So let's move on to part five now. All right, so if you have gotten to the point where you have broken through all four of those plateaus and you can play up and down the entire neck of the guitar, you can play your pentatonic scale, you can, you know, where the blue note goes within all the pentatonic positions, you can play the full diatonic scale, you can play in major keys, you can play in minor keys, you can target chord tones over many different types of chord progressions, and you can do so with relative ease. You're well ahead of the game, all right? So you're probably... You have probably better control over the fretboard than 95% of other guitar players out there. All right, I'm just making up that statistic. I don't know if that 95% figure is correct, but I've met a lot of guitar players in my life, and most guitar players, you know, they don't have that much control over their fretboard. This is really a thing that, you know, just to get to that point, you're going to spend your entire life attempting to master it. You can only get better and better at it. But, you know, eventually you're going to get to the point where you're like, okay, I can play in key, I can target chord tones, I know my pentatonic scale. That's boring. Well, that's the fifth plateau. The fifth plateau, um, you know, maybe you want to start incorporating diminished arpeggios into your playing. Maybe you want to start uh, really learning how modes work and how to really incorporate modes into your playing. Maybe you want to start learning how to, you know... Uh, play over really complex chord changes where there's all types of chords that are out of key um, or maybe, you know, any type of thing like that. And uh, my suggestion for this particular plateau, 
Now this is a really advanced level of plateau, so if you're at this level, you probably already know how your own brain works and how you learn, so you probably don't need to listen to any advice from me. You can probably figure this out for yourself. But the way that I approach this is um, I really start to hone in on intervals. All right, so let's say that, um, you know, let's say I wanna start really getting good at playing the Dorian mode. So what is the Dorian mode? Well, the Dorian mode is just like the natural minor scale, except it has one note difference. The only difference between the natural minor scale and the Dorian mode is one note, and that is the sixth degree. So if the uh, natural minor scale is this, the sixth note is right here, one. Okay, so that note right there, you raise that a half step, and then it becomes the Dorian mode all of a sudden, so. So by raising that sixth note, or that sixth scale degree, or that interval, by one half step, I have my Dorian mode. So I can take that sixth, that raised sixth right there, and I can put that here. I can also find that here. Okay, I can also find that here. I can find that here. I can find that here. All right, so that's the one interval that I would be focusing on. So I'm soloing, I'm in the key of A minor, I'm noodling around with my A minor pentatonic scale, my A natural minor scale, throwing in that blue note, doing all that fundamental stuff, targeting the chord tones. But then, you know, maybe I want to kind of switch things up, add a little bit of interest to in my playing. I want to immediately have the ability to switch to Dorian like that. So it makes sense to have an understanding of where that sixth degree is, no matter where I happen to be on the fretboard. And that's what I'm talking about with this interval thing. Once you've mastered the fundamentals and you know these this diatonic framework so well and you can play in the key of A minor really, really well, and then you want to switch to Dorian and have the command the ability to switch on command like that, then it's not really going to be hard to figure out where that one note difference is within this framework. All right. So that's what I'm trying to say. Master the fundamentals. Once you master the fundamentals, then you know then kind of focus on intervals for whatever concept that you happen to be kind of teaching yourself next and again the the process is always going to be the same at least for me i start off in just one position and i slowly expand my way until i cover the entire fretboard so you know intervals would be the fifth plateau buster that's just my approach so anyway that's the fifth plateau uh I'm going to end the video here. This is getting kind of long. Um, you know, I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to ask. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.